fast, fastest. Almost done. She is vice president of VNM, who designed this amazing roller coaster behind us, Yukon Striker, the tallest, fastest, and longest in the world. So what in your view is uh, the best selling features of a dive coaster, not only for Canada's Wonderland, but for any park, anyone looking for something really interesting to add? I think the most interesting part of the dive coaster, the part that I like best, is the face down vertical free fall. It's a unique element that you cannot find anywhere else. And that is combined with the three second uh, stop before the drop. At that point, you're just hanging there for three seconds with your feet dangling in the air. Wondering yeah. if you're going to survive, correct? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously, yes. <laughs> and you're looking at you know, 75 meters of emptiness below you, and then suddenly you drop face down. It's a great feeling. It's breathtaking. Which coaster from BNM is one of the most sentimental to you? Uh, that's very difficult. It, you know, it's like asking me which of my uh, children do I prefer. <laughs> <laughs> very understandable. But I, I do like Yukon Striker a lot. It's a fantastic, fantastic coaster. It has a great variety of elements. It's uh, interesting from the beginning to the end. It's a great coaster. 
Sophie, thank you for spending time with us. You're welcome. Everybody, I'm here with Grace Peacock, Director of Communications here at Canada's Wonderland. So I understand that uh, today, 72 lucky riders had the chance to be the first to ride Yukon Striker directly behind us here. Yeah. <laughs> well, from the sounds of the screams and then the smiles when they came off, I think they loved it. <laughs> Absolutely. And of course, this was in support of a sick kids hospital here in Toronto as a first rider auction fundraiser. Uh, how did it go today? What were those reactions of the first riders getting on off that train? You know what? I think everybody, the fact that everybody immediately ran back onto the train was it was a good sign. It's music to my ears as, as a park person to hear the screams when everybody's the staring down that 90 degree drop. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that's the reaction we're looking for, but so good. long as everybody's happy when they get off the ride, which they all were, then yeah, I think we did a good job with you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of being wanted to be the first to ride, when guests come through that gate every day this season, I'm sure that ride is going to make them want to run there as fast as possible, re-ride it over and over again. Mm -hmm. What is it about that you feel, uh, what do you feel about UConn Striker uh, would make them do that? Well, there's there's a lot of different experiences on this coaster. You know, you've got obviously the, obvi the, the, the ultimate thrill, the most intense experience is probably sitting in front row where you get to see that 90 degree drop into that tunnel. And the, the coaster holds riders over that summit for three seconds. So when you're in front seat and you're hanging there and it's nothing but, you know, open air and those restraints between you and that drop, you know, your, your stomach's in your throat a little bit. So you have to experience that. But then depending on where you're sitting on the coaster, you're getting a different experience. So the back row, you know, if you remember like on when you're a kid on a school bus and yes. you're in the back row and you go over a bump and you fly off your seats, it's right? It's the best, no? Right, yeah. yeah. So you're getting those forces of acceleration and gravity playing with each other, mm -hmm. working with and against each other to give you that sense of weightlessness in the back row that you're not going to get in the front necessarily as well. Well, because it's a wide train, you know, it's it's three rows of eight mm -hmm. and it's floorless. So unless you're in the middle seats, you're you're sitting with your legs dangling over open air mm -hmm. and those outside seats are gonna give you that extra that extra whip around those inversions depending on where you're sitting. So I think people are gonna be coming back and again and again to just try out the different seats. Absolutely. So hear that? If you're on the edge, uh, more terrifying. If you're scared <laughs> of roller coasters, maybe squish to the middle just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, middle <laughs> row, center. I think would be the advice. And for those guests that uh, maybe not into hanging over a drop for uh, three seconds or so, can you tell us what else is new this year throughout the season of 2019, uh, going through the summer, fall, and for the first time ever at the park throughout the winter? Winter, yes. So we have, um, we're opening up this year, obviously with Yukon Striker. Um, Yukon Striker is part of a new themed section of the park, mm -hmm. Frontier Canada, um, which is themed to the Klondike Gold Rush in the late 1890s in Western Canada. And it's actually, it was an original concept for the park. So back in 1981, when they were designing the park, Frontier Canada was supposed to be one of the original five sections. It never happened, and it got shelved, and we have these old concept drawings and books about what this was supposed to be. And as a park, we're really trying, trying to go back to our roots in terms of the theming that was originally here. So we're bringing that back. We've got new restaurant venues there. We've grouped in a new family of rides into this area, including Vortex and Lumberjack, which was our new one last year. Um, throughout the summer, though, we have you know our 20-acre water park, Splashworks, that's uh, that everybody loves. You get that included with your admission or seasons pass, and we have a whole lineup of events and entertainment throughout the season. So. Um, our Celebration Canada is black. We have um, Kids Fest. It's like a kids party with Marvel superheroes and TV characters and foam pits and dance parties. And it's, it's a lot of fun for the little ones. Uh, we have Ultimate Thrill Circus. We have our Taste Festival. So Taste of Italy, Taste of Greece are back. They're our fan favorites. New this year, we've got Taste of Mexico. Ooh. Yeah, which you got to try if you like your, your spicy burritos. Yeah. And, um, and we all have, yeah, in fall, we turn over to Halloween Haunt in the nights and uh, Camp Spooky for the kids during the daytime. And then, yes, for the first time ever, we're extending our season into the winter for Winterfest. Excellent. Very so, exciting. Yeah, an immersive holiday event. Obviously, the big poster is running, but it's going to be more of an interactive experience with skating and holiday lights and lots of fun stuff, shows, and we will have some rides running. Great. Yeah. Great, thank you so much. It's shaping up to be an awesome season, it seems like. Can't wait to give this a try a bit later. A bit nervous, but oh, I think it'll be worth it. So front row, center, or end, I guess. Yeah. The more terrifying experience. You can't go wrong. Straight down into underground yeah. and underwater tunnel, which is pretty incredible, yeah. something unique. Right. Excellent. Great. Uh, Grace, thank you so much for your time. Everybody, this is Jason with Theme Park Review again. I'm here with uh, Peter Switz, who is Director of Maintenance and Construction here at Canada's Wonderland. Peter, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Yeah, you're welcome. What 
you tell us about this Yukon Striker? Sure, of course, yeah. <laughs> so this is um, Yukon Striker. It's our, our new dive coaster for 2019. Um, it's, uh, it's the biggest, tallest, fastest, longest dive coaster in the world. It was quite an undertaking to get it to get it here. We started in 2014 with the planning and mm -hmm. uh, development of the, of the ride. We broke ground in January of 2018, so we've been 16 months in the, in the build to get it to where it is now. It's, uh, it's quite a hit. I think people are going to really like it. Fantastic. It's Judging from the reactions, I think that's true from uh, the first rider auction this morning. What is it like uh, basically planning this type of ride and what made the park uh, decide on a dive coaster specifically uh, out of all the other types of coasters? Well, the, the reason for choosing a dive coaster for our site was we wanted something unique, something different. We've got quite a variety of different coasters in our park, but we didn't have anything like a dive coaster. And we had a unique opportunity with this location to provide some elements that we didn't have anywhere else in the park like our underwater tunnel, mm -hmm. um, to dive into that vortex helix at 130 kilometers an hour is, is very unique. You don't have that opportunity in many other sites. Um, so this one is uh, is unique because of that, obviously the big height mm -hmm. and um, the speed. And then getting into that tunnel, um, it's a 200 foot long tunnel, but you pass it in under two seconds. So there was a lot of investment and a lot of effort that went into constructing it. And to have it happen so quickly, people don't appreciate what, what went into Absolutely. making it happen, right? So we're unfortunately uh, limited in when we can build. So building that tunnel in the winter was a big challenge for us. Uh, we can't build in the summer, obviously the park's in operation. So we did the bulk of our construction in the, in the winter months. Getting that done was, was a big chore. Uh, I heard you even have to move water and waterways to get that tunnel built. Yeah, uh, there's city there's permits a, and whatnot. There's an active <laughs> water course through the pond that we had to divert and work with the region conservation authority to uh, to make that happen. Uh, but it was a uh, yeah interesting here about the unique challenges uh, for Yukon Striker. How is uh, maintaining this ride a bit different from all the other attractions at the park? This. <laughs> is similar mm -hmm. to the other B&M coasters that we have. Um, we, we wanted to work with B&M because we've had great success with them, with both Behemoth and Leviathan. They're both um, very reliable machines um, and they're easy for us to maintain. Uh, they are more time required to maintain them because there's so many more, more moving parts. The dive coaster is just a bigger beast. Right. You know, the wheel carriers are bigger, the wheels are bigger, the motors are bigger, the chain uh, lift is longer. Um, it's, uh, I shouldn't say it's longer, it's, uh, it's steeper. Right. Um, but, um, plus that awesome uh, three second hold at the top. Yeah, that's Plus another a, unique its own feature. piece of a technology, right? Yeah, another <laughs> motor, and, motor and gearbox up, right. at, up at that height to, to take care of. Uh, we've got friction drives up there and brakes, and none of our other coasters have that right. up at that height. We've got a return sprocket at the top, and that's all we need. But this one, <laughs> we, we need a little bit more. So there, there are more challenges from a maintenance perspective. But you know, with good planning and, and having the right resources, the right people around me, uh, we can keep this thing running like a watch. And so what's your favorite element so far? Well, that dive is pretty special. Yeah. <laughs> got a, a, a Tacoma Boomerang from right. 87, and it's similar to that, mm -hmm. but you know, you're know you coming down that drop at 45 degrees instead of 90 degrees, so that's my favorite element. Absolutely. Favorite row to ride in? Well, it's the front. Absolutely. Um, being dangled over the, yeah. <laughs> over the drop at that 100, and, or at that at that 245 foot drop, um, it's pretty pretty neat. You don't get that experience anywhere else. I can't wait to ride it later today. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to hearing some feedback from, from everybody. So I'd like to hear your your thoughts on it as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Thank right. you so much, Peter. Really yeah, appreciate welcome. it. Have a good day. Congratulations on the ride. Thank you.